you are awesome. All right. I'm going to, so again, I just wanted to give an opportunity for um, us to have a little bit more formal, more realistic, more, you know, um, traditional sort of way to look at this. Actually, before I, I don't actually want to share yet. So, um, so Leo and Jensen and Haley, have you take you took the, the ELA test already, right? All three of you did? Yes. Okay, so I want you to just take a moment because you're gonna be our experts for a moment. This is really good review for us to do um, for you as well, because it still helps you with picking out CMAS questions and so forth. So who would, which, which one of you would be willing to share first? Um, some of the things that you think really went well and or some of, the, some of your feelings about taking the test. Who would be willing to share first? Ms. Haley? You're usually brave. Oh, Jensen's being brave. All right, Jensen, be brave. Be brave. I have a question, real quick. Sure. Um, what was it? The ELA test in Tesnav? Yes. Yep. Okay. So, uh, but I, so Jensen, when you took the test for real, when when you um, did you take the test for real already? I and don't. Mrs. Creel with Mrs. Creel. No. No. Okay. All right, Ms. Haley, when you took the test in person, when you came, right, and came to school and you had Mrs. Creel help you out, you know, did those things. Tell me something how you felt about the test. What? So when you took the CMAS test, right? You take you came for three days to take the CMAS yeah. test. Tell me about how you how what what you think of it. What were some things that you thought about it? Well, I thought it was a little bit hard, but uh, I didn't give up and I kept trying. Woo! Perseverance. Good job. So are the, are the questions that we're going through right now, um, are they very similar to the questions that you saw on the, on the CMAS test? Yeah. Oh, you're, okay, you're muted, my friend. There you go. Uh, yeah, they're kind of similar. Part A and Part B and some of the writing materials. Yeah. Yeah, very similar. Okay. Mr. Leo, you came and did some things too, right? How did you, um, can you share some of your thoughts about how it was? I thought it was kind of challenging and kind of easy. Okay, so there is a variety of questions. Mm -hmm. So some are easy, some are hard. How about the writing part? How'd you feel about that? I felt like it was a little hard for me. But did you stick with it? Yes. Persevered? Okay. All right. Good job. So, so these kiddos have already kind of experienced some of this, but we are just wanting to also, um, they definitely can benefit from still practicing, right? Because you have, you'll have the map test that we're doing in the future. So um, these are always good skills to take. You're always up. Uh, my, um, ben, my son, just took a test the other day, um, and so did Miss Aaliyah, Mrs. Aubin's daughter. And so they just took a test, a multiple choice, you know, click on thing, you know, like fill in the blank, you know, they had to make choices. They have these same skills. So whether you're in third grade or ninth grade, this is a skill you're going to keep on taking out throughout. So it's always good to go through them and practice. All right, so I'm going to have you, this is going to go a little differently than with Mrs. Aubin. Um, so I, I'm just going to give a short introduction and then we are going to, I'm going to have you log in and read and answer questions on your own, just like you would for the real test. And then we'll go over some of them. I'll ask you to stop and so forth. So before, uh, don't open your computers quite yet, because I just do want to have an opportunity to show you one more thing. Thank you, by the way, um, Leo and Haley for sharing that um, information with us. I appreciate that. I put you on the spot a little more, I'm sorry. Um, so just a reminder about, of course, all of those things that we're trying, right? We're gonna be able to use strategies to, our, to answer the selected response questions. Thinking about when you, a lot of the questions today are about what do the words mean and how do you know? And they're all from that context idea. Um, using writing strategies, we uh, may or may not get to all that writing today, but we are definitely going to use those technology tools. 
Um, when we talked about, this is often talked about what do close readers do? We use all those different possible ways to find out what word mean. You're gonna use a lot of context today, reading around the word to figure out what that word means. My friends in the back, thank you. Um, thinking about the gist as you go on. You, um, it is a super great thing to go back to the text. In fact, Mrs. Harrison always says go back to the text, but do you wanna to have to read the text more than the whole text more than once? The whole text more than once? No. no, because that's gonna take a long time. And these tests are time. Not in, they give you a pretty good, they give an amount that most third graders can definitely finish in, but it's not forever. It's not like one of those EL tests where we can let you do it forever and ever and ever until you finally finish. There is a certain amount of time. So we have to do what we call time management. So my suggestion to you would be as you're reading, don't stop and take a lot of time to think about what's going on, but do stop it occasionally and say, okay, this is what's happening in the story and think about it in your head before you go on, because you don't want to have to read the whole entire story again to answer questions. But we do want you to go back to the text and look at for the evidence, obviously. Selected to, um, so response questions, multiple choice. You're going to do some of those today. Same thing that we've been talking about. Read the questions slowly and carefully. I had some friends yesterday who were reading and they didn't, they, they missed some important words. Words like not or many or some of those words that were, if you aren't reading carefully, you might actually write the opposite answer than the one they want you to answer. All right. So really be careful and read it slowly. Remember to think about which answers. You know, which answer you would, before you even look at the answers, think about what you think the answer is, then go and look at all of the answers, right? And then you get to cross off, you get to eliminate the ones that don't make sense. And you can always go back to the text to look for them. All right, we're not gonna worry about writing at the moment. We might get to, don't forget, you're gonna use scroll bars today. The stories are pretty long. So you need to read that, use those scroll bars and make sure you use them for the whole page, not just the story. You guys, I think are getting really good at all the tools, going back to be able to review and be able to see what you've answered, what you haven't answered. Today, we're not gonna answer all the questions all in a row, but again, that's a strategy you're gonna wanna make sure you're using. Um, you guys are very good at the, elim now, somebody asked me, do you have to eliminate the other answers? No, right? It's a tool. Just like I don't always use a hammer, right? Like if I need a screwdriver, I use a screwdriver. I don't necessarily use a hammer. It's a tool that's available to us, but don't spend a whole lot of time Xing out things. That's taking time that you don't have extra. If you know which one is the right answer, then don't bother pressing the other ones out. However, today there is at least one question that is definitely, you're not, you, you might be caught between two answers. You definitely need to look at, so you might, that's a great time to use that eliminator. Eliminate the ones you're sure are not, and then take a really careful look at the ones that are left over. Yes, Mr. Logan. Oh, totally. You can definitely, use, so it's, it's one of those tools you use when you need it, but don't spend a lot of time using it if you don't, right? Right, right. So use it if you need to, but like, you know, especially if you want, if you want to go back and hit that bookmark, if you're sure that you're like, I don't know which one of the two is the right answer, but I definitely know these two, bookmark it, go on, and then come back when you're finished with the others, for sure. All right. So my friends, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Now, my questions are from a slightly different place than Mrs. Auburn's questions, so I just need you to look because it looks different, just the tiniest bit different than hers. So in a moment, I'm not sharing. Oh no. All right. That's bummer because I was just going over all these things. Oh, golly, that's what happened. Oh, because I had all my friends that were talking to me. That's what it was. Oh boy. All right. Thanks for letting me know, guys. No, that's okay. Totally. All right. So you're going to go to your Google Classroom in a minute. Hold on. Not yet. 
And you're going to look for today, which is Thursday. So it's slightly different than yesterday's. So, but it says Thursday, all third graders. Now look how it even looks different, doesn't it? On this, a little bit. Not, it's not that big of a deal, but it's just a little bit. So you're gonna click on where it says Colorado ELA. And then see how it looks a little bit different than the other one? You're gonna click on third grade three. And I will help you through these in a minute. Online item set one. So see how it does not have one, two, and three like it did for Mrs. Aubin? So it just has one item set list, all right? When you click that, now this part will look very familiar because instead of saying that it said District of Columbia, this one says Colorado, you just hit, don't put your name in, just go ahead and do like you did with the before. And here you just hit start. See how it's a lot, but it looks almost the same, but just a little bit different. And then here's your, here's where we're gonna get to, okay? So I would like you that this is where I really need you to be good listeners, because when we give you the real test, there are a lot of directions and you don't want to skip ahead because that will mess all of us up, you know, kind of thing. So again, I want to give you that feeling of what does this feel like in, you know, a little closer to real. All right. So go ahead, everybody open up your computer, get into classwork again. So open up, find our Google Classroom. August, open up your computer, find Google Classroom. Sawyer, where's your computer? All right, find today's assignment. Everybody, all my friends at home are always super quick at this. All third graders on Thursday under April 12th. Just looks a little bit different. You're going to click on Colorado. Okay, if you're already in, I just, I just want to go step by step if you've got, yeah, all right, here we go. When you're, when, when you've got to this page, give me a thumbs up so that I know that you're ready. If you've already got on, well, that's, that's all, see, that's what I'm saying is when we give the real instructions, you have to not go ahead, so stick with me. All right. I'm still waiting for a couple of friends. Does everybody see where it is? Okay, go ahead and click on Colorado ELA to get to this page. Well, I'm wait, waiting for everybody to get there. I see Cole's ready, Charlie's ready, awesome. Go ahead and hit grade three when you're ready. No, you're not doing an actual test. We wouldn't be able to talk to you like this if we were doing an actual test. We're, I'm trying to get you your mindset that what it's going to be like when you're all sitting and taking the test at the same time. Okay? It was kind of relaxed over there, right? We were practicing kind of willy-nilly. Now we're getting a little bit more formal. Okay? All right. Anybody have a staff or me, Mrs. Aubin? All right. So now that you're here, you say online item set one. Make sure that you um, that you clicked. Don't have, have math. Make sure your ELA is what's clicked. It's the second one over. It's right here. ELA. Make sure you have ELA so you're not doing math. Then you go ahead. Yep. And then you'll see online item set one. And then it gives you that same test nav thing that we had before. So you online item set one. Do you see right here? Hmm. I don't know how you got there, my son. Oh, did he click on the paper one? Gotcha. Yes, they have a paper one for the teachers to print out so you can practice doing it on paper. But that doesn't do us any good because you will take it on the computer, right? So you can hit start. It'll tell you that there are 12, this part's really much shorter than the one Mrs. Lobin had right here. And then you hit start. Okay, can you just let me finish this? I'll get it, just give me one, just a second. Okay, go ahead and hit start. And I then hands away from the, the keyboard for just a moment. Hands in the air like you don't care. Okay, hands in your lap now. Actually head, shoulders, lap. There you go. Thank you, Leo. Follow directions nicely. Awesome, awesome. 
All right, eyeballs up here for a minute. Okay, so Mrs. Oven did a super great job of reading all the instructions, right? And telling, oh, Mr. Finn, where are your hands supposed to be? In your lap. I don't want anyone starting it. Okay, hey guys, Miss Lena. So Mrs. Oven gave you the instructions last time. She read them for you. Am I, or is she gonna be able, be able to really do that in real life? No. So I'm not gonna do that for this set. I want you to read the instructions. So read this section right here all by yourself and read the first story by yourself and answer the first set of questions and the second set of questions and the third, this little pull down. You're gonna do this little section too by yourself. So for this one, they want you to choose what makes sense. I'm not going to explain too much because I want you to read the directions, but at, you're going to need to do the right ones. You're going to click here. It's going to give you choices and you need to click on the right choice. And there's four of them. All right. So we are going to go over the answers. Don't go past this page. All right. Just do the story that's called the Glockentown Clock, Clock Keeper. Read the whole story. Use your scroll bar. And answers, you should not go past page three of 12. That's where we're stopping, all right? So I'm gonna go back so that it looks like the bright beginning page. Now, everybody reads at the same time, at the, at the, at the, not at the same pace, right? We all read at our own pace. We all answer questions at our own pace. So if someone finishes early, then what are the rest of us gonna do? Persevere and Keep going, right? Just gonna keep going. After I get quite a few people finished, we'll probably stop you and go over the answers, whether you finished all of them or not. But I want you to get a sense of what it's like with people nearby you taking the test, all right? Okay, any questions before we begin? Ms. Haley? Yes. Any other questions, Lucas? You start on page one and I want you to stop on page three. But answer all the questions up to page, page three. Are you okay? Any other questions, Mr. August? I'm not trying to start it. I I have not started your time yet. No. All right. Don't worry about how much. So we will post a time in the real test, so you know how much you know. You have to keep an eye on how much time you have. But we're not going to worry about that for today. All right. All right. Go ahead and start. Quiet, just like it's a test, right? Quiet, like it says, my friends who are online, just keep, um, just go ahead and start, stop and let me, however, you should let me know. Um, I'll keep, try to keep an eye on when you're finished. Yes, yes, please start. Oh, yeah, I don't know. You already did. I sort of did, but my set, but. Right. She was wondering why they were in there on. Right. This is weird and I talked to him about it. Hey, Gavin. All right, Mr. Gavin. So can I show you what we're working on today? Okay, so 
So I'm going to share my screen. You're going to go to, um, we're practicing again some more um, test taking skills, um, but you're going to go to Thursday, third graders ELA review. And it looks a little different, okay? So when you click on it, it looks a little bit different than the one Mrs. Aubin did. You're going to make sure that ELA is clicked. Um, and then you're going to click third grade. And then this one looks a little weird. It's going to say online item set one. So you'll click on that. And then it'll just go straight to this one and then you'll hit start and start again. And it's going to, I'm going to ask you, I'm asking you guys to work on the first three pages. So the first story and the first three sets of questions. Does that make sense, Gavin? Yeah, okay. So um, we just started working on it. So go ahead and choose the answers, use all of the tools that you can, you know, practice using the tools. And um, we'll stop in a little, we'll um, stay with me and then we'll go over the answers and see how you did. All right? Okay. Thank you. 
It is absolutely not a race. You do not get anything for finishing early. Use your time wisely. If you finish, go back to me and press. Yeah. That'll be fun. All of them should hear. Okay. No. Go over your first one. Yep. Go back and double check. I'm not going to stop us for a couple more minutes. So those of you who are still working, awesome job, right? Yes. Way too fast. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. 
Yeah, you weren't supposed to read the second story yet. But go back and double check, Miss Riley, and we'll figure it out. Hold on, the first three pages. Okay. Nope, you didn't want that to be, you didn't want it. Hey, there's, okay, so you want to read it first page, second page, and first page. Miss Madison, if this is a real test, you absolutely cannot test anybody else. That's why we're trying to test this, right? What, next question, the real one? Oh, where are you going? Uh oh, disappeared into the void. You don't hear that paper. Okay. If you're right in the middle of a question, I'm going to have you go ahead and answer it. I'm just going to let you know that I'm going to give it in about one minute. We're going to start going over some of the answers. So finish the one you're on. Do a good job on the one you're on. If you're not finished yet, if you are finished, you're double checking. That's what you're working on. Good. So I expect to have them all right. What do you mean is part A? This is part A, the first one. So you fill up. Yeah. That's why this is, that's a good question to ask now, since we can't tell you on the real one, right? Remember that Tom that they saw them showed us in Mac that goes like curve and then to the outside? Uh-huh. Yeah, I heard that on the bus this morning. Did you? That's pretty funny. Oh, good. Interesting. All righty. If you could hit the um, hit your review and go back to the question number one for me, even if you're not finished, go ahead and stop for right now, and we'll go over some questions. Yes, Mr. Renee. Okay. Well, hopefully, when I go over it, it'll help. Let me know if it doesn't. Okay. When we get to question number two. All right. Hey, so at this point, your hands are off the clickers other than just getting to that first page for me. All right. So I'm going to tell a quick, really quick story. So, you know, Mrs. Oven and I can't really say much when we're given this, this test, right? And I used to have a student. He's actually a seventh grader right now. I'll call him Bob. His name is really not Bob. But Bob was, he was a really, really good reader and really smart kid in math and all those things. And he was really very capable. I was sure he was going to have the exceeds expectations when we got back his scores from CMAS. And every time we took a test, I would remind them, this is how much time you have. Use all of your time. Go slow, but keep an eye on the clock. Don't go, you know, there's going to be a happy medium, right? Well, every time this kiddo finished, it was way before everybody else. Now, of course, he's a good reader. He can read fast. He, you know, he's he has lots of confidence. But when those scores came back, he didn't get that exceeds expectation. And I thought back, gosh, this kid should go should, sure should have done that. But what I realized was he did, I remember, I remember back to that test when I couldn't tell him, hey, go back and double check those answers. Hey, slow down. Because that's what I would have said if I could have. But he went through them super fast. And even though he was super smart and super confident, he made mistakes. Which some of some of us obviously will anyway. Nobody's going to be perfect on this test anyway. But I can guarantee you that if you spend the time well and really double back, you know, go back, bookmark things you're not sure about. Go back and double check. It will definitely, definitely help your score. Okay. So don't rush through it. Nobody gets prizes for being the first person done. It doesn't give you any extra points for how your speed. 
All right. So please don't. All right. So you read the story yourself. I'm not going to reread the story on this section because the next section I'm going to read the story with you. So I'm not going to spend any time on that for the moment. But we're going to start right into that question. So go back to question one. I want you to look at which one you chose. All right. So what does the phrase on the nose mean as it is used in paragraph six of the Glockentown clock caper? Not pleasant to hear, exactly correct. Too, or much too clear, bad smelling. So is this literal or non-literal meaning? When it says on the nose, is that literal? No, that's non-literal, right? That's why they're asking these questions. Do you know what non-literal means? Does it really mean it's on my nose? No, not at all. All right, so not pleasant to hear. Exactly correct. Too much, much too clear, bad smelling. So hopefully everybody went right back to paragraph six, right? Everybody did that, right? Yes, Mrs. Harrison. So here is that, it's quick and short, bong, bong, two deep chimes interrupted raclette's thoughts, two o'clock on the nose. What was the problem? So which answer, so was it bad smelling? No, no that was too close to the nose part, right? It's definitely not that one. So on the nose, two o'clock on the nose. Is that not pleasant to hear? No. no. So that leaves us two options. Which one, Noah, what do you think? I picked B. You picked B? I did. You picked correctly. It is B. Answer is B. Oh, silent excitement. We're not, we're not making a bunch of noise. Because some of us may have had trouble with that one. And we don't want to make anyone hurt. That, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Because I had to look up one of the answers for one of these. I have to tell you. Which detail from the passage best helps the reader understand the meaning of on the nose so you have to go back and look around it don't you which one raclette hears an awful screeching noise the clock ch chimes at the expected time the front of the clock looks like a face raclette looks up in surprise well is the face part were they telling us that one because they think it's nose again it's a real nose so that's not our answer definitely not the clock looks like a face right what are you thinking Stand up if you um, thought it was A. Stand up if you thought it was B. Oh, stand up if you think it's C. Don't stand up, Gavin. Stay in your car. Stay in your seat. <laughs> you can't stand up, I realize. It is B. You are correct. Yeah. Oh, what did I say about yeah. silent excitement? All right, here we go. Next one. The Glockentown cape, clock caper, what in the Glockentown clock caper, wow, I, that's kind of a tongue twister there. What happens as a result of Raclette's talk with Professor Berg? A, Professor Berg offers to help him learn how to play the musical instrument. Professor Berg gives Raclette the clue that helps him solve the mystery. Professor Berg tells Raclette how to become a better horn player. Or Professor Berg gives Raclette an excuse to leave the cafe. Now, this one didn't tell you where to find the answer, right? You had to go back and find the answer on your own, right? Okay, does anybody have any that they want me to eliminate entirely just to start with? Abby. Um, B says, uh, Daddy left the cafe. Okay, so you, uh, do we agree? Should we get rid of D? Yeah. Yes, yeah. very good. All right, next one. Astria, what are you thinking? Um, C, you want me to get rid of C because he tells him how to become a horn player? Yep, he does not, so that is good. So that leaves us with A and B, right? Okay, raise your hand if you think it's A. Raise your hand if you think it's B. All right, so luckily most of our hands were on B. It is indeed Professor Burr gives Reclette the clue that helps him solve the mystery. Yep, okay. yep, those three. They're on their way. You, you can just have them. Yep, yeah, you can pull them. You bet. Um, or letter B. Which sentence from the passage best supports that part A? Raclette took two more thoughtful sips, then went out to meet the musician. I'd like to take a lesson from you, Professor Raclette said. I'll tell them to pick a time, the same time every day, and just make the sound for 10 minutes. 
That really helps the mouth muscles, you know. Which one of those gives us the idea, again, go back to the, not the one before, that the professor gives him a clue. Which one of those tells him he give, gives him the best clue? Logan, what do you think? B? No, it's not B. C. Oh, say, say it again. C. It is C. Very good. Sorry, I heard B. B and C sound a lot alike from very far away. Thank you. All right. It is C because it gives it what gives him the clue? The time that if, if it's the very same time every day. What time does the clock go off? Two o'clock every day. How long does the music last? Oh, how long do you want him to practice for? 10 minutes. So that is our answer for that one. All right, next one. Use the drop down menus to complete a description of the characters in the Glockentown clock paper. All right, it'll be ruined. Who will buy the clock from anyone in the Stubin family now? Stubin says in paragraph 10, this shows he is worried that the problem will hurt his business, visitors will stop coming, people will blame him. That's okay, so then so should I just put in a you should put well you should put in the answer that you think is right now and then see if you get it right. Yes, good question, Eddie. Eddie said she didn't put um if you haven't gotten to this one yet, go ahead and put in the answer you think is, is right. You don't actually get a grade for this, friends. This is again just practice because practice makes progress. The more practice we have, the better we'll be at this. All right. So which one do we think it might be? Which one do you think it might be? Hmm, I've only got two hands up. That's a bummer. Same two as before. Anybody at home want to guess? Or tell me which one they think? I'll put down the choices again. The problem will hurt his business. Visitors will stop coming. People will blame him. Leo, what do you think? I think it is the problem will hurt his business. Very, thank you for being brave, Mr. Leo. That is indeed the right answer. Good job, excellent. Details and paragraphs, ooh. This time, instead of you them telling us the paragraphs, this time you have to tell them the paragraphs. Is it in paragraphs two or three, four and five, or 11 and 12? These were, a this one was a little tricky. So let's go back to two and three, let's look. Remember, it says the details. To his great surprise, all of the villagers were standing in the square. Oh, wait a minute. Is that even missed the part with Mr. Strappen? No. no, so it's not two and three. And our next choice is four and five. Let's see, four and five. Is that about Mr. Stoopen? No. no, probably not that one. 11 and 12, I better go check. 11 and 12, let's see. Let's make the cheese turn. Making the cheese turn sour, groaned Appenzeller, the, the, the town's cheesemaker. And none of my bread will rise, cried Frau Becker, returning to her shop. To, Does this sound familiar like other people are complaining too? Yes, that's it. The other people are complaining too, 11 and 12. So the, the other people feel the same way. Paragraph one, though, shows that Raclette is, so we got to go back to one, don't we? Do, do, do. Detective Raclette pedaled his bicycle over the muddy hills toward Glockentown. This had better be worth postponing my afternoon nap, he thought, turning the last corner into the town square. So does it show that he is excited to see everyone? No. no. Bothered by the case? No. Or eager to help others? No. Bothered. He's bothered. He's grumpy. Wants to take a nap. Wants to take a nap. And he would rather be doing something else, thinks of an easy solution, or wants to, we always read all of them, right? Always read all of them, or wants to prove himself. Well, rather be doing, so, what would he, what was the something else? Sleeping, right? Taking a nap, very good. All right, okay. Everybody move to the next page, page four. All right. I'm going to read, but I want your eyes on the text. All right. So you're going to read with your eyeballs are going to read while my voice reads. 
Um, this one, it, now normally I wouldn't be reading it for you. You'd be reading it on your own. But for time's purposes, I'm going to read it and we're going to answer the questions together for today. All right. So it says reread the passage from the haunted um, clock tower mystery, then answer the questions. Well, all right. So we got to read the, this new. So did you notice anything similar about the title of this story than the other story, Elena? They both have something, they have both have the word clock in the title, don't they? All right, here we go. Eyeballs on number one, the paragraph number one as I read along. Just then the clock chimed loudly. It's almost time for the evening concerts, said Ezra. Would you like, kids like to watch me play the Carillion? You bet, cried Benny. Is that it? He pointed to the large wooden console in the center of the room. Yes, that's the Carillion, Ezra said. The bells are upstairs. We'll go up in a minute so you can see them. They're the best part. You won't believe how big they are. The children had never seen anything quite like the Carillion before. It reminded them a little bit of their upright piano at home. Just like their piano, it had a music stand on the front. Underneath the stand, instead of the keyboard, a keyboard, there were two long horizontal rows of wooden knobs sticking out. Down near the floor was a row of wooden pedals and up above the carillion was a row of wires leading up through the ceiling. What were you supposed to be doing while we were reading that? What should you have been doing in your head? Thinking in your head, but there's a certain word for that when you're thinking certain pictures in your head. Abby? Mm. Renee? Visualizing. Should you be visualizing what the Carillion looks like? Yeah. During that paragraph, you should be. You should be thinking, okay, what does a piano look like? And get that picture in your head first, right? Good job, Surnay. And then it says it has a music stand on the front. So you should be adding that to your picture. Then it says underneath there, instead of a keyboard, like with the keyboard of a, of a piano with all the keys, Instead of that, there were two long horizontal rows. Remember, horizontal is this way. Mrs. Aubin tells us horizontal and vertical, right? Horizontal. And so you should be thinking about that, of wooden knobs sticking up. Now, your picture of wooden knobs might not be the same picture as my wooden knob, but you have to start thinking about that when you're reading through this. Dear near the, down near the floor was a row of wooden pedals. Did you add the pedals to the picture? Yeah. All right. Down um, and up above the carillion was a row of wires leading up through the ceiling. Did you add that to your picture? Okay, add that, what you need to be doing is visualizing while you're reading. How does it work? Jesse asked. I'm on paragraph seven. Is everybody on there with me? Number seven. Here we go. You sit on this bench to play it, Ezra said as he sat down. When you press down a knob or a pedal, a bell rings like this. He said, pressing down on the far left knob, the children heard a bell chime above them. That's really neat, said Henry. Can I try, Benny asked. Sure, Ezra said. Then he carefully pressed down one of the knobs in the middle. Again, the Aldens heard a bell ringing above their heads. Now let's go see the bells, Ezra suggested. The Aidens followed Ezra out of the tower room. A small, dark stairway took them to the floor above where the bells were housed. There were two rows of large, heavy bells on the bottom and two rows of smaller bells hanging above. Are you visualizing? Okay. That one on the end is bigger than me, Benny cried. And it weighs a ton more too, said Ezra. It weighs more than 4,500 pounds. Would you like to go inside it? Benny's eyes grew wide. Can I really? Sure, Ezra said. Then he bent down and ducked underneath the edge of the heavy bell. When he stood up inside, all the, all the others could see were his legs sticking out at the bottom. Hello out there, he called. His voice had a strange muffled sound from inside the bell. Finally, he ducked down and came back out. I never stood inside a bell before, he said. All right, question A. You're gonna make a choice. Are you ready? Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. I'll get that for you. All right. Question. Yes. 
You want to grab it? Part A. Are you ready to answer? Get those fingers ready. We're going to pick one. What does the word Karelian mean as it is used in paragraph five of the passage? So what should you be doing right now? Scrolling to paragraph five, right? How is it used in paragraph five of the passage from the Haunted Clock Mystery? Tower mystery. Is it a huge toy made from wood, a machine that tells time, a musical instrument, or a type of game? Choose one. For time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Does everybody make a choice? Give me a thumbs up if you have a choice. Everybody should have chosen A, B, C, or D. It is C. Right. Now, um, uh, part B. Here we go. My friends at home, did you do pretty good on that one? Give me a thumbs up or a thumb. Yeah? Okay. Number part B. Which detail from the passage helps the reader understand the meaning of the word carillion? Just then, the clock chimed loudly. Paragraph one. It's almost time for an evening concert, said Ezra. Paragraph two. You won't believe how big they are, paragraph four, or there were two long horizontal rows of wooden knobs sticking out, paragraph five. Make a choice, go back and reread, find your evidence, make a choice. All right, give me a thumbs up when you're ready. All right. Okay. Mr. Max Fox, which one do you think it is? D, there were two long horizontal rows of wooden knobs sticking out. Okay. So what do, happens when we pull those knobs? Mr. Max? Very good. The bells make a ringing sound, right? So that does go along with a musical instrument. But the meaning of Carillion, that one, it that one definitely is a detail, but that's not the detail they were that best helps the reader understand the meaning. Moran? B. Why do you think it's it's almost time for the con evening concert? Why do you think so? Because Carillion is a and what do you do with an instrument? You play it at a concert. You play it at a concert. It is B. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next page. Here we go. Here we go. Don't, don't lose me yet. Here we go. Read paragraph four of the passage, The Haunted Tower Mystery. Yes, that's the Carillion, Ezra said. The bells are upstairs. We'll go up in a minute so you can see them. They're the best part. You won't believe how big they are. How do paragraphs five through seven add to the idea of paragraphs four? So what do you have to do to answer this question? What do you think you have to do, Sonny? You have to go back and read paragraph five through seven. And paragraph four. So they gave us paragraph four but we could go back and read it, all of it, right? We could start it with four, three, five, and six. We could. So let's read it. The children had never seen anything quite like the Carillion before. It reminded them a bit of their upper piano at home, just like their piano. It had the music stand on the front. Underneath the stand, instead of a keyboard, there were two long horizontal, or, or, ugh, horizontal rows of wooden knobs sticking out. Down near the floor was a row of wooden pedals, and up above the Carillion was a row of wires leading up through the ceiling. All right, how does it work? Jesse asked. You sit on the bench and play it, Ezra said as he sat down. You, as you press a knob or a pedal, a bell rings like this, he said, pressing down on the far left knob. The children heard a bell chime above them. All right, so those three, those three paragraphs, how do they help us understand paragraph four? They explain why Ezra wants to play the Carillion for the children. 
They explain how the Carillion actually makes a sound. They explain why the Carillion's bells must be so large. Or they explain how Ezra learned how to use the Carillion. Everybody make a choice. Make a choice. See which one you think it is. These are hard questions, friend. But you're doing great. Doing great. All right. Who thinks it's A? Raise your hand. Who thinks it's B? Who thinks it's C? Who thinks it's D? All right, got lots of options here, all right, don't we? All right, so going back and looking at what exactly it's telling us, it says, how does it add to the ideas in paragraph four, right? So the paragraph four talks about the bells upstairs. They're gonna go see them, right? But he's explaining how the Carillion makes the sound. It is B. Now look at this one, Mr. August. Look at part B. Look at the question here. It says, which two details from the passage best support the answer to part A? What, why did they do, why did they make this really dark, August? Why did they say two in big, bold letters? Because it's super important. It tells us that there are how many answers we have to pick? Two. Two. You need to pick two answers for this one. All right. So it wants to know which details best. Two. So pick two. Pick two. I give you five choices. Pick two. Logan, eyes on your own computer. Just focus there. Miss Abby, did you pick two? All right. Mr. Finn, did you pick two? Awesome. Mr. Robert, did you get two? We're still working on it. Got it? Okay. I don't want to rush anybody. I'm just trying to make sure everybody's feeling good about it. Give me a thumbs up if you're finished. You've made two. All right. Now we're definitely going to have some hands. There's two choices, right? We might have a lot of combinations. Who picked A? Anybody? Okay, who picked B? You're gonna hold your hand up twice, aren't you? All right, Who's gonna, who picked C? Remember, you're gonna have two hands up at some point. All right, how about D? All right, how about E? Okay, there were definitely two most popular answers. So again, let's go back to C. It's how they explain how the Karelian actually makes a sound. So the children have never seen anything like the Carillion before. Is that about how it makes a sound? No, no so it's not going to be A. It reminded them a little bit of their upright piano. Well, piano makes noise, right? So I could see how you might pick that one, but does that one tell how this one works? No, no so it's not B. Down near the floor was a wood, row of wooden pedals, and above the curling was a row of wires. Does that say how it works? Yeah. Yes. And you sit on this bench to play it, Ezra said. Hmm. Sitting on the bench, does that tell how it works? No. no. The children heard, heard a bell chime above them. Yeah. That is our second one. Yes, it is. All right. Nice job. All right, this is one of those drag ones. Here we go. Should we read this? That we need to read the directions really carefully, right? Choose one statement. Oh my goodness, this is definitely an EL skill, isn't it? That is a central message of the Glockentown clock caper. And one statement that is the central message of the passage from the haunted clock tower mystery. Drag and drop the statements into the correct boxes. So here's the, the clock caper. Here's the clock tower mystery. Here are your four messages. So if you put one message in one and one message in the other, how many are going to be left over? Two. Are you going to use all of them? No, right? You're not going to use all of them. Yes, Isabel. 
So did you, uh, there isn't anything under central messages here? You're on, should be on page six. Are you, are you good? Yeah. Oh, no worries. Got, no worries at all. No worries at all. All right. The good thing about that, Miss um, Isabella, is if you accidentally skipped a page on the real test, when you got all done and you went back to review it before you finished, you'd notice that you hadn't finished it and you could go back and work on it. That, um, no, no worries, no worries at all. All right, trying new things can be exciting. Do not let your fears hold you back. Taking care of your things can help keep problems away. The cause of a problem is not always what it first appears to be. All right, so you need to choose one of these for the clock town caper, the first story, and one for the second story. Mr. Finn, our eyes are on our own computer. Is if you get caught looking at somebody else's computer during the test, it's a bad thing for Mrs. Aubin and I, let me tell you. Got to keep your eyes on your own, because we want to know what you know, not what your neighbor knows. Give me a thumbs up when you've made two choices. I will give you a hint that I definitely think that um, this is a hard question. Definitely a hard question. Give me a thumbs up when you think you know. Did you put, got to drag both of them, right? Got to drag two of them so there's only two left over. All right, who's brave at home and wants to tell me what they think one of them is? Mr. Oh, anybody? Anybody? Jensen? Any ideas, my friend? For what? Which one of those should I drag to the top? Sorry, um, I was I was moving this chair, so I wasn't okay. really listening. So we're answering this question. The block and tail clock keeper. We're looking for the central message. Want to be trying things can be exciting. Do not let your fears hold you back. Taking care of your things can help keep problems away. Or the cause of a problem is not always what it first appears to be. I think it's the bottom one. The bottom one? And remember, you can always go back to the text, right? If you forget what the first story is about, what should you do? Go back and relook. I will agree with you, Jensen. That is indeed the because the cause of a, because the cause of the problem wasn't that the clock was broken it was that somebody else was making the noise at the same time right so good job jensen all right stick with me though all right that one wasn't as hard as i think the second one is so i definitely see two options here two possibilities trying new things can be exciting is that a possibility Okay, how about do not let your fears hold you back? I think that one's a possibility. Taking care of things can help you keep problems away. That one doesn't even go with it, right? What what things were they trying to keep track of? I don't know. That one just makes it, but you definitely have two options here, don't you? So do you have to go back maybe and reread? Yeah. Maybe so. So remember, if we're looking at the clock, the clock town mystery. Um, so we've got Ezra and we've got Benny. Is it Benny? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we got those two guys, and one's showing him the, the the instrument, and then the other guy is experimenting with it. How many do you think is the first one? Trying new things can be exciting. Whew. Yep. How many do you think is the second one? Do not let your fears hold you back. Okay. So many of you did not raise your hand, so I'm gonna guess you're not sure, right? Is that what that not making a choice? And I get it. So the official answer, if you were being graded on this, is trying new things can be exciting. Because Benny, when he, he tried things out, right? He played the instrument and then he went upstairs and did what? Got underneath the bell. All right. So that one was a little tricky. So what do you do in that case? What do you do if you have two answers and you're not sure? Eventually you have to make a choice. So you just make it. Make the best one you can, possibly go back and bookmark it in case you have extra time. But then you just need to do what? Go move on and do your best on the rest of the test. We're not expecting anybody to be perfect. And so I totally get that question was a toughie. So if you missed, you missed chose, 
It's understandable. Make a choice. Go back if you have to, and if you can, get out extra time, and then just move on, because that's all you can do, right? That's all you can do. All right, my friends, you did a nice job today. Tomorrow, guess what part we're going to have you do? The essay part. And we are gonna, and it's gonna be similar to today. I'm gonna act like this is the real deal, and you're gonna have to, to type as best as you can in the time that I give you. And I'm, then I'm gonna show you what kind of answers got the best points and what kind of answers got less points, and have to give you a chance to up to get to compare yours to some others. All right. Okay, so we're done for this time. Go ahead and close your computers. We're gonna um, be done for this part, and I'm gonna see uh, everybody at math time on uh, Mrs. Auden's link again. All right, hopefully that gave you some good ideas, and I will see you guys later. Bye.